We're now going to discuss the notion of limit and continuity for functions of several variables. Uh, let's start actually with uh, the definition of limit for um, a function of two variables. So we will say that the limit as x comma y approaches a b of f of x y is equal to l. So we're looking at the case where the limit is finite. Um, if for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero such that if the distance between the point x comma y and a comma b which is none other than uh, the square root of x minus a squared plus y minus b square is less than delta and greater than zero then f of x y minus l is less than epsilon. So this is the classical definition of limit in the spirit of uh, the French school of uh, analysis that was led by Cauchy and in some sense put uh, the whole theory on rigorous terms. Now we have to note here that uh, the intuitive approach to the notion of limit was that as uh, that the limit of f of x y is equal to uh, l, if whenever we plug in inputs that are close to the point that we're trying to approach, a point a b, let's say, then the outputs seem to be close to um, the limit l. Now, the problem with this approach is that it is left up to anybody's interpretation of how close the outputs that we get should be to the alleged limit L before we can actually ascertain that the limit is indeed L. What uh, the rigorous definition of, of limit was, was to take away this ambiguity and to very much assert that all proximity requirements need to be satisfied. And uh, that is the only way to formally say that uh, the limit of a function is a given number. So first of all, uh, it would be useful here to note that uh, we can have uh, multiple variations on this theme. So for example, X and Y do not need to approach a point that could approach um, infinities or the limit doesn't have to be um, a finite limit. It could be infinity or negative infinity, but pretty much all of those definitions can be modeled along uh, this definition by using uh, the notion of proximity to the uh, corresponding uh, quantity. So uh, proximity to infinity can be interpreted as uh, taking values that are very, very large, either in terms of inputs or of outputs, depending on what kind of situation we're uh, examining. The truth is that we're not going to uh, work too much with this uh, rigorous definition of limits. It's just a, an opportunity to actually see uh, what kind of definition was needed in order to uh, advance the theory as it was done in the uh, 19th century. Um, and pretty much we're going to say that uh, for the functions that we're going to be working with, as long as you can uh, plug in, uh, then that will be the limit. So it, in, in some sense, if somebody were to ask, what is the limit as x, y tends to um, 1, 2 of x, y uh, over x uh, plus y square minus 1, then the answer is, uh, let's try to actually plug in 1 and 2. If we do so on the numerator, we get 2. On the denominator, uh, we get 4. 
And this number that makes perfect sense doesn't have any zeros on the denominator. We could even simplify to be equal to one half, but that's besides the point. So in such a case, uh, the function uh, has this obvious limit. So in other words, interesting cases come up when we have a situation where by plugging in uh, whatever uh, numbers we're trying to approach, we don't find the definite answer for the limit. Before uh, we start looking at such cases, it would be nice to note here that uh, we furthermore define uh, the notion of continuity. So uh, f of x, y is continuous at a, b if the limit as x, comma y approaches a, b of f of x, y is f of a, b. And pretty much, uh, we can assume that uh, in this course, we're going to be working with functions that satisfy such a condition uh, everywhere they're defined. And that's simply because of the nature of those functions. They're uh, obtained by using uh, uh, polynomials, power functions, uh, trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions, um, exponential functions. Uh, they're being combined algebraically or uh, they're being composed and all of this processes produce functions for which this principle that we just gave is true. So in order to um, come up with some kind of interesting uh, situation, we might as well turn to uh, a case where plugging in uh, doesn't work. And we're going to present one method that is going to be uh, useful for us. Uh, this will be a method that one uses in order to show that limits do not exist. So it can be strictly uh, used in that case. So the method is called the uh, two-path method. And the idea behind it is very simple. So um, we choose two different paths. different ways of approaching the point under question. And if the feedback in terms of the outputs, in other words, along these two paths, ways is different, uh, from one another, then the limit doesn't exist. The best way of going about this is to actually do an example and see how this works. So imagine that we wish to show that, so here's an example. Show that the limit as x comma y approaches zero, zero of x, y over x squared plus y squared does not exist. And we're going to accomplish this by indeed using the two path method. The question of course that comes up here is uh, what does it mean to choose two paths? And the idea is pretty simple. Uh, choose a vector valued function, for example, uh, that as the variable t tends to let's say zero, or it could be some other number, it approaches zero, zero, then plug this into the function under equation and study that composition. Meaning uh, it will be very, very convenient for us to first of all, name our function. So uh, set f of x, y to be x, y 
over x squared plus y squared. Then the first path that I'm going to choose is f of t comma zero. f of t comma zero, as t tends to zero, approaches, uh, or t comma zero as t tends to zero approaches zero, zero. And what is the output? The output is uh, t times zero over t square plus zero square, which is the same thing as zero over t square, which is equal to zero, which means that all the outputs that we get are zero, which means that the limit zero is approached. Uh, geometrically, what this means is the point under equation is the point zero, zero. And basically we're saying that we move along the horizontal axis. This is exactly what the points t comma zero comprise. And the uh, limit that we get this way is zero. However, if we approach now the same point, zero, zero, along the uh, bisector of the first quadrant, then we're going to get a completely different reading. We will get t square over two t square, which is equal to one half, and that tends to one half. So this tells you that as we approach this way now, then the readings that we get, the outputs of the function that we get are actually equal to one half. Exactly because of this discrepancy uh, by the two path method. So we found two paths that lead us to different feedbacks. Uh, the limit does not exist. And, and here, of course, the obvious question is what would have happened had we chosen two paths that gave us the same limit? And the answer would have been nothing. We, we, that couldn't have been, uh, wouldn't have been a uh, favorable outcome for us. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to deduce anything. So either one can demonstrate two paths that give different limits, or this method is simply not usable. You cannot use it in order to say that the limit does exist just because you have happened to uh, check two paths that gave you the same limit. Let's do a different example now. And as usual, with all these examples, you might want to pause the recording and try to do them uh, yourselves. Uh, so, Let's look at a different example, which in some sense it's the same thing, but we, we have just tweaked it a little. So show that the limit of x, y square over x square plus y to the fourth does not exist. And again, um, as before, we're going to define a function. By the uh, quantity that appears inside the limit, we're going to begin by taking f of t comma zero that that worked before and it will work just fine now. And this gives us zero limit. And then uh, we will try to combine now uh, appropriately chosen powers so as to get pretty much the same power on the top and the bottom. And the way to do that is to take f of t squared comma t. Okay, so this will give us t squared times t squared on the top. And the bottom will be t squared squared plus t to the fourth. So this is the same thing as t to the fourth t to the fourth plus t to the fourth, which is t um, to the fourth over two t to the fourth. These two things cancel, giving us one half. So this approach is one half. Again, the story is the same. The two limits are different, which means by the two path method,
the limit. Does not exist. Now, um, one could ask, is there any um, conceivable way of showing that the limit does exist in cases like this? And, uh, you know, we have a, a general result known as the squeeze theorem that says that if um, f of x, y is between g of x, y and h of x, y, and the limit as x, y tends to a, b of h of x, y is equal to the limit as x, y tends to a, b of g of x, y. So the uh, smaller function, the larger function tend to the same limit. Then they squeeze in between our function and let's say this is equal to L, then the limit as x, y tends to a, b of f of x, y is equal to L. So <clears throat> with this in mind, we have the following interesting example. Just tweak a little the function that we were given. So let's say show that the limit as x, y tends to 0, 0 of x, y squared over x squared plus y squared. So I just made the y on the top to have a second power. As you're going to see, this will be enough for the limit to actually exist and be equal to 0. Uh, here, it wouldn't make any sense to try to even use the path method because we're saying from the beginning, unless somebody doesn't believe it, that the limit does exist. The path method is strictly used when the limit does not exist. And, uh, and here the idea is pretty simple. Uh, we start with a little bit of algebra. So we take x, y squared over x squared plus y squared. And we write this as x times y squared over x squared plus y squared. In fact, let's put the whole thing in absolute values. And this is less than or equal to uh, x times 1. Uh, the second fraction, y squared over x squared plus y squared, is less than or equal to 1, simply because it has a numerator which is less than or equal to the denominator. So this means uh, that our quantity, xy squared over x squared plus y squared, will be between absolute value of x and minus the absolute value of x. And of course, this tends to zero. That tends to zero as x and y approach zero. So by the squeeze theorem, this gets squeezed in between and tends to zero by the squeeze theorem. And this is a very nice situation that shows that uh, one can find in such an indirect way that the limit uh, does exist. Of course, there are, again, many, many different ways of showing that uh, limits uh, do exist or do not exist. And uh, what we just uh, showed here is just a small sample. And as far as our course is concerned, we're only focusing on the two-path method and not on the squeeze theorem. Thanks for watching.